Now you can create vector images from Mid Journey simply by using a few simple tools after your image has been created. So in order to do it, basically you want to type in your prompt. Now there's a few things you want to make sure you get in order to sort of engineer a good prompt. I'm going to say, uh, because I need things to be fairly simple and you don't have to use exa these exact words, but keeping it simple and cartoony will make it easier for you to actually convert to a vector image. Otherwise you might have to find yourself doing a bit of editing. You can, but using the words vector logo, vector art, even if I wanna put in there emblem, something that simplifies the idea of what that image should be will help create the right type of image that is suitable for a vector image. So I hit enter. And if you check out these results, you can see they're pretty cartoony, pretty vectory. So uh, we're going to upscale. Uh, let's upscale this third one, and I'll show you how we can convert that into a vector. Now this has been upscaled. I click on it. I click open in browser, and then I right click and save this image so I can import it into my program. Before I show you the free tool, uh, there's some guys out there who will use Illustrator. I want to compare the two, so we're here. In order to add it in, I go file, place, grab my image. And place here. If I want to trace this image in Illustrator and still get some pretty good results by going to Object, Image Trace, and Make. Now straight away it tends to go black and white uh, because of the default preset, but here at the top you notice there's a few different presets. For example, I can choose Silhouette and it'll get a similar result again, or Sketched Art but these are mostly black and white down the bottom here. I want something with color, so obviously not black and white logo. High fidelity logo makes it a little bit choppy, but it's there. Low fidelity logo, that's cleaned it up pretty well. And I think that's pretty much what we're gonna run with. But if you wanna do further adjustments, you can click this little panel here and you can do things such as you can make it less or more paths. So if I crank these paths right up, you'll find it might be less smooth, a little jagged. So I can smooth it out by going less paths. I can add corners if it's too smooth, although that's actually turned out a bit better. But if I turn the corners right down, it smooths it out a bit, but we're gonna keep that high because it looks best. And you can basically adjust these settings until you get what it is you're after. Uh, the color accuracy, you can crank that up if you are finding it's being a bit too relaxed with the colors, but that also tends to jagger the image up a bit. So I'm gonna go back down. Overall, that low fidelity logo produced a pretty good profile. And there's a few things here where it's not perfect. But overall, it's pretty, pretty good. Uh, when I'm done and I'm happy with that, I click expand. And now it's created a vector object I can go in, I can edit. So if I want to, I can zoom in and I can actually start to grab points. I can change the color. So I can edit it like a vector image and it's actually not too bad. Don't get me wrong, it's not perfect. But considering we've spent about two minutes creating this image, I think it's pretty good. But there's actually a free tool out there you can use to create SVGs if you don't have Illustrator or you simply want to get a different result. It's called Vectorizer.ai. So at the moment it's free because it's still in beta. It's still in beta. But uh, if you upload your image, it will upload, process, and convert. Uses AI to convert to vector. And you see it has an original and vectorized result. So if I zoom in a bit, you can see how clean the vectorized image is compared to the bitmap. So it's actually done a pretty good job of vectorizing this image. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna download it. Let's bring it into Illustrator. And you see we now have two different vectors. The vectorized image AI one has actually done a bit of a better job with the cloud. If I zoom in, this is the illustrator trace. This is the vectorized.ai trace. So vectorized AI is actually, in my opinion, probably a better tool for converting to vector. It does use AI to do it, so I believe it probably does a better job at identifying some things. However, there are some areas where it has done not as good of a job. So if I look at here, with the paw, we've got these nice simple flat color to the lines come back in over here and there's a few sort of bits and pieces in there but ultimately it comes down to preference and the cool thing about this is because it is a vector image i can just select that background and remove it and i've got a nice transparent vector i can use i can edit i can change the color of the dog if i want to Pretty cool, and that Vectorize AI also does a great job with some more complex files. So I'm gonna show you a few right now. Here is a more complicated image I did as a vector that I wanted to test out. And if you zoom in, you'll notice it's done a great job with the sunglasses, the dog's hair, the whiskers, 
it's actually created a pretty high resolution vector file that you can work with. Now smoothing out something like this would be a ton of work because of the different objects, but you can see just how useful it is. So I'm gonna throw a few more images at it to see what we can get. So I got this image from a previous video that I've done. And now if I zoom in, you can see how it's smoothed everything out and done a great job creating vector art out of that. And that's a fairly simple color image with lots and lots of detail. So it does handle detail very well. This is another very high detail image I created a while ago. Uh, as a test and you can see how well it handles the detail and the strands of hair to create this vector image so it's actually very powerful even for highly detailed vectors once again flat colors but detail this anime image it doesn't seem to handle the fades too well because it's very difficult for auto tracers to know when to add things like gradients but uh, it's still not bad for what it is, but this is where you start to see auto tracing starting to fall a little bit because it can't really handle these fading colors as well. As you can see, it goes very solid. And the next one, same again, we've got this fade in the background. You can see how much it steps out. Now this is not to criticize the tool as much as get you to understand what it's really good for. It's still cool for creating something that is a vector image, but you just don't quite get that nice gradient effect you do with a bitmap but you can go in and edit that and just create a gradient if you want to and finally again this ninja image which still looks pretty cool as a vector again some of these fades are not showing up but the overall image is actually pretty cool and because it's a vector we can scale it to any size and we get these nice smooth lines uh, then when we use it so that's a pretty cool tool and a pretty cool way to convert uh, some ai artwork into vectors now remember keeping it simple is the key to getting the best results but uh, have a play and see what kind of results you can get with vectorizer ai along with mid journey ar or even your own personal art to see how it looks all right thanks for watching the video and i hope you have a great day